Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Call Up, the fantasy baseball prospect show. As always, we are brought to you by Triple Play Fantasy, and your co-hosts are me, Marty Tallman, and Christian Crespo. Today, we are breaking down the Houston Astros and their top 10 prospects. Let's do it. Hello, hello. Today we have a very, very special guest. He is a Dynasty Fantasy Sports player, a commissioner, and content creator. You can find him talking about prospects every Tuesday live on YouTube at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Prospects Power Half Hour brought to you by the Plazo Podcast. You may know him as Phil of Sports on Twitter, and we know him as Phil Goyette. Phil, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks for having me, guys. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Right. Yeah, and I mean, we've been, uh, we were talking off air. We've both been a huge fan of yours for a super long time. Love following your work. Um, recently signed up for your blog as well. So keep pumping those things out. I got my email notifications ready. All right. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to have you on board. So, yeah. Thank uh, you. And Christian, how are we doing, brother? Well, we're doing great. Doing there absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. So today we're going to go over the uh, Houston Astros and their top 10 prospects. I always like to start just with like an overall of the state, like kind of like a state of the union. You know, how are the Astros doing not only at the major league level and how is that uh, blending into the minor league level? Christian, I want to start with you because of that look on your face. How, how are the Astros looking these days down by the farm? It's a little rough, a little rough around the edges. Um, yeah, not really much to much more to say other than that. I mean, they've, have had not have they haven't had much success in trying to build it back up um especially with uh um, you know losing the draft picks and whatnot after the whole trash can scandal gate <laughs> but um you know it's something that they're gonna have to work towards and they're trying to build up internationally as well as you know with the recent draft picks that they've had but it has to start somewhere, and this is uh, kind of where they're hoping that it, you know, they get to kick that back off. Yeah, and what we've seen from the team just overall, you know, the previous five, ten years, you know, it looks like they were pumping out prospects, you know, uh, yeah. you know, pretty efficiently. Uh, Phil, want to go to you? How do we feel? Are we any more optimistic? <laughs> um, well, uh, farm farm wise, I would agree with Christian. It's it's nothing that's going to be an eye opener. Um, compared to some other teams in the league. That being said, these this organization seems to have a way of willing major league players into existence that's kind of crazy. So um, they've got a couple pitchers that were kind of afterthought, uh, older international free agent signings like Luis Garcia. Um, Jake Myers had a nice debut last year as an older prospect. Um, I'm forgetting the name of uh, who's the guy they traded to Miami. Uh, De La Pena, Brian De La Pena, uh, is that De La right? Cruz, Brian De La Cruz, De La Cruz, Brian De La Cruz is an older uh, prospect. So somehow they tend to develop these older guys that that can uh, come up and contribute. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen again this year. Honestly, I don't know who it's going to be, but Jose Siri, Jose Siri is another guy they had up last year. Kind of did the rounds in some different farm systems, so. He's like I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, and I think I think overall, just from an organizational standpoint, they have always been willing to invest more into their players than most um, most owners and everything like that. Um, from what I've heard, at their um, spring training facilities, they actually have an apartment building across the street where the players actually stay, and they pay for them to live there, and they help them with food and all of this different stuff that each team, most teams, refuse to do at this point, and that's part of kind of what they're fighting about. Um, so just I think that kind of does lend into that, that if you invest in your players, you know, from the bottom up, you know, you're going to see that, you know, in uh, dividends on the once they go up to the major league level. So um, but yeah, let's start with uh, Christian's number one guy. We're going to start with Corey Lee. 
uh, he's the catcher, 23-year-old out of California. In 2019, he was drafted 32nd overall, signed a $1.75 million signing bonus. In 2021, over 88 games at high A, double A, and triple A. Moving on up. He slashed 277, 340, and a 438 slug, 11 home runs, 45 RBIs, and four stolen bases. Christian, he is your number one guy for a reason. Tell me about him. Well, first, he's a catcher prospect with promise. So that automatically gives a player just a, a boost because you don't really see that a lot. But um, Corey Lee is somebody that the Astros really, really do like in their system. You know, He has above average bat speed. Um, he has a pretty good feel for the strike zone as well. Uh, the one thing that he does tend to do is he tends to get really pull happy. And especially this last season, as, as he's continued to face kind of harder pitching, um, pitchers have picked up on that. So he, they, you know, they throw him a lot of off-speed outside, you know, sliders away, breaking balls away, uh, because he, since he does get so whole pull happy, he opens up and you know he'll swing and miss a lot. Um, but as a catcher, he's pretty well built already. You know, he's fully developed. There's not really any more room for him to grow. Um, he's okay back there, but, um, one thing that I've heard that they've really wanted to key in on as soon as, you know, everything gets kicked off back to normal spring training is him working with Martin Maldonado and the fact that he is such a good defensive catcher behind the plate. If he could just pick up a couple things behind them, um, from him, you know, it, it could really benefit him going forward because this year they still have Maldonado under contract for one more year. They also still have Jason Castro. So I'm pretty sure that for at least half the season, Corey Lee is going to spend in AAA, let him get down there, continue to develop his bat, work on his glove a little bit more so that when he does come up, he's ready to go and take over the full catcher uh, starting job. Yeah, I mean, you, you're naming off the catchers that they have. There's a lot of uh, miles on those uh, on those knees oh, yeah. and those backs and those legs. Uh, oh, Phil, yeah. how about you? What do you think about Corey Lee? Yeah, I I agree with Christian. I think there's probably a good opportunity for him to play this year um, at the big league level, and I think he could probably handle the job. So um, I don't know that he's the most electric prospect out there, but he seems really uh, well-rounded. Um, I don't think he's got tons of power. Power is usually the first thing I'm looking for. Um, and then batting eye kind of play controls the second. Um, so... Uh, he did. He hit for a decent amount of power at Double A last year. The Triple A sample was was smaller, um, so I guess let's see how he does spring this spring. Let's how he, see what he does in that first Triple A assignment, um, and see if we get a little more pop out of him. I think if we get a little more pop. I'm a little more excited. But uh, for real life, for the Astros, I think he'll be a, a nice piece, and they won't have to go outside the farm to at least have a guy that can catch every day for him. Yeah, and the team still, I would say they're still now in win mode, right? So, um, yeah. do you think that's any any kind of a kind of like kind of sucks for him? Like, you know, they don't want to have to spend time developing a catcher when they're trying to win a World Series, right? So, do we see him just playing maybe just maybe once twice a week, or do we see him maybe getting a full time gig by the end? And either of you guys can jump in on that one. No, I I think for the most part, um, they're pretty happy with their current catcher situation, especially since their window is just about to close really um, with Correa most likely leaving and guys like Yuli Gurriel getting older, Michael Brantley, same thing. You know, they do have really good young players in Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker. We'll see what happens with Bregman now as he returns from the injury. But I mean, for the most part, they they've got a win now. And uh, I think, like I said, he'll, if he comes up, it'll be really late this year. Um, but well, they, they're going to want to roll out Martin Maldonado as much as possible. Gotcha. All right, let's Agreed. go on to the number two guy, Jeremy Pena, 24-year-old shortstop out of the 2018 draft. He was drafted 102nd overall. In 2021, over 37 games at rookie ball and AAA. Wow. Uh, he slashed 297, 363 with a 579 slug, 10 home runs, 21 RBIs, and six stolen bases. Phil, I'm going to start here with you, um, Jeremy Pena. Where do we see him fitting into the um, the Astros' plans here with Correa moving on? Um, do you see him potentially coming up right away, or what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, uh, assuming that Correa moves on, which I don't know is going to happen, but let's just hypothetically say it does, 
Um, if they don't sign him, Pena could probably be their opening day shortstop, which is kind of exciting. Um, and I think he can handle the job just fine. It's it's interesting. Coming up, he was supposed to be this glove first shortstop. So um, he's developed a lot since they've drafted him. And uh, I know he was hurt last year, so he didn't play a ton at AAA. But um, my numbers I had at his barrel rate for those 133 AAA plate appearances at 18%. Um, which is huge. So he showed a lot of power last year and uh, 23 when I think this is age 24 season this year. Yep. So um, there could still be some more development in that department. Um, the glove can definitely handle shortstop. So uh, Pena could be a, a capable replacement. He's not going to be Correa, but he could be a capable replacement if they need him. Yeah, when you talk about that barrel percentage, woo wee! Uh, that's something I love to hear. That's you said eighteen percent, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and kind of out of nowhere, he wasn't supposed to be a power hitter when they drafted him at all. So there's that Astros development, <laughs> uh, Christian. How about you? Um, yeah, he's an elite defender, so they're not going to miss a beat there with uh, Correa if he does leave. I mean, he's got a potential to be a four a four tool player. You know, he doesn't really have that much speed. So that would be the only tool he lacks. But he has really good, you know, gap to gap power as well. He really does utilize the, you know, the open space out there to get a lot of doubles and stuff. He very athletic. Um, I mean, he's just a really good all around player. As much as uh, I mean, as far as translating over to fantasy wise, probably not going to do much for you there. But you no, know, real life player wise, he's going to be really good for that lineup. Yeah, I'm, Phil. I mean, you you, you gotta. Um, I'm looking at your 2021 minor league hitters um, uh, Google sheet, and it is absolutely incredible. And it, it it's a free resource for everybody to be able to check out. So you know, if Phil, if, I'm gonna plug it for you. Uh, <laughs> make sure you're going to uh, <laughs> flowcode.com slash page slash Phil of Sports. You'll see his blog there, and this Google sheet is absolutely incredible. You know, and there's not too many people that are going this far in depth with actual what barrel percentage, you know, runs creating average everything. So, um, yeah, it's a great tool. Uh, let's if move you, on to you get on there now. You can you can see me clicking around on the sheet in real Ooh, time. That's always fun. I'm using it as we're talking. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Let's move on to Hunter Brown. So the, the first arm we're going to talk about right handed pitcher, 23 year old out of Wayne State represent Detroit. I love that. Yeah. He's out of the, the Warriors. <laughs> Yes, he is. Wayne State Warriors were about 15 minutes away from the uh, the campus where I'm at right now. So, um, yeah, so out of the 2019 draft, went 166th overall, over 21 games, or sorry, in 2021, over 24 games, uh, he pitched 100.1 innings, a 4.04 ERA, a 1.42 whip, 131 Ks, and 50 walks. Christian, talk about Brown for me. Uh, Brown is actually one of the guys that they have hit on recently. Um, just in the way that he's been able to develop at the pace he's been able to develop in their system. Um, his fastball has really improved shape-wise as well, has really good rise to it. Um, he always – is one thing that I noticed in watching his videos is that he always has a plan of attack. He is not afraid of a hitter, and he is never afraid to throw his changeup at any point in the count. He is you know, really just mentally developed as well. Um, strong body, strong frame. He kind of has a rock in his delivery, kind of like Luis Garcia mm. does. So I don't know if that's something that he picked up from him, but uh, it works for him. And um, especially this year, uh, I'm not sure if he fits into the rotation now because they already seem to have a log jam there. But uh, he's gonna, he could be a, a real strong back end of the rotation arm, uh, the very least. Uh, I project him to be maybe a SP3. Uh, going forward throughout his career, which is what teams need. And with, you know, his average command and control, it could get better. But um, for now, I, I see him as a pretty reliable option for them. Yeah, I mean, and with, um, you know, Lance McCullers and a couple of the older guys on that staff, you know, they're only, you know, a couple one, two injuries away where he may have to come up, whether it's in maybe starting or and longer. there was a report today saying that uh, McCullers was behind on his recovery. Yep. Yeah. So. So, hey, you might, they might be uh, give him the call a little bit sooner than we thought. Uh, Phil, do you want to add anything to Hunter Brown? Um, you know, I, I so I have an ERA estimator that uses uh, strikeout percentage, walk percentage, and ground ball percentage as, just, as the only three inputs. 
And that has him about half a run lower than what his actual ERA was. So he was more like a 3-6 talent ERA last year using that. Um, and if you look at it, I was just kind of looking. Um, he, he, he had good ground ball rates at both double-A AA and triple-A. Um, a lot of his fly balls went for home runs. So I would imagine that actually comes down a bit. Um, and then if you look at double-A where he made 11 of those starts last year, his BABIP was actually 375, his BABIP against. Which is that'll definitely come down. That's yep. it's um, uh, above kind of the uh, talent level you'd expect for a pitcher. Usually three thirty, maybe three twenty, three thirty is about as high as it'll get. So um, there's a room for statistical improvement just based on that kind of stuff for him. Um, so yeah, I, and I think Houston will probably be creative with how they use him and how they use all their guys. So they are a system with their pitchers that they have them uh, piggyback or, or pitch in bulk roles or pitch in opener roles throughout the minors, really. So they can do that sort of stuff in the major league level as well because they've uh, kind of exposed these kids to that before they get up to the bigs. It'll yeah, be yeah. interesting to see – sorry, Marty. But um, now that Brett Strom went over to Arizona, a uh, new pitching coach, you know, kind of we'll see what the new philosophy is there because you mentioned the ground ball rate, the high ground ball rate. That's something that the pitchers at the major league level also do. Framber Valdez had an over 70% ground ball rate this year, which is absolutely ridiculous. But same thing with Jose Urquidy and Christian Javier. You know, they pitch low in the zone to get those ground balls, which is why it's important to have the good defenders behind them. So, you know, Jeremy Pena's, the Altuve's, the Bregman's, the Yuli Gurriel's, it's that's why, you know, that's why they're able to, you know, develop these pitchers into that. So it's pretty cool to see it go all the way down through their system and kind of them continue to build up that way. Yep. And like I said, anytime we're rooting, you know, there's a, a guy that's, uh, you know, from Wayne State, I'm going to be rooting for him all the time. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm hoping he gets the call up. That's really cool. All right, let's move on to Pedro Leon, the 23-year-old outfielder out of Cuba. In 2021, he signed a $4 million signing bonus. And in over the uh, 72 games at rookie, AA, and AAA, he slashed 220, 339, 369 with nine home runs, 36 RBIs, and 18 steals. I'm going to start here with you, Christian. Uh, do we see his the, the power-speed combo? Do, you, do we see that floating over to the majors, or what are we thinking? Man, let me tell you, he really disappointed this year there were high expectations for him when he signed and i mean he has an above average bat he has plus raw power he has plus speed you know he was he's everything you could probably want in a player he has the potential to be but he just did not hit the ground running i mean he like i said has all the potential um could Projects to be a really good defender in center field as well with his speed and his glove and his arm. Um, but it's just about him completing the transition over to professional baseball in the States. Because in Cuba, he was, you know, the high, you know, the highest, you know, prospect coming out. And, you know, he got a four million dollar signing bonus. So they there's a lot invested in him. And, yeah, they they want to get him up. So it's. He might be another one of those older prospects that comes up and makes an impact, but for now, he's still he he's going to be in the minors at least another year and a half, probably two years. Okay, so we should expect him to kind of be that new beginning for the Astros. You know, um, once they kind of just they relinquish their older players and they kind of they turn that next page for the uh, their next run. Uh, yeah. Phil, you want to add anything there? Um, you know, I think there's – when you look at his profile, there is a lot of little things to like. Um, takes a lot of walks, does hit for uh, power, maybe not um, at, at excellent level power, but I could see above average power here. Um, I know that a double A is home run to fly ball rate was 26.5%, which is high, so that's good. Um, I know he struck out a lot last year, but the other thing I'm looking at is, his, is actually his swinging strike rate wasn't that high. Um, it was only around 11% in double A like and triple really A selective both. at the plate. And yeah. that's what caught, got, it got him like it, he got caught in so many deep counts. And then that's when he ended up, you know, just not being able to pick it up from there. Passive. Um, yeah. The whole thing kind of screams that he was being maybe a little passive. Um, 
But, you know, if the guy's going to walk 15% of the time, I don't hate it. There's always some value in that. So um, if you can do that and uh, have a good glove and hit for power on occasion, uh, maybe he's not going to be a star. But there are, there are little bits to the profile, I think, that could um, – they I could see him put it all together, honestly. Yeah, and he'll have a and like he's uh, Christian said, he'll have another year or so to be able to figure that out. But yeah, 2022 mm -hmm. and 2023 are going to be huge for his development. So we'll be staying tuned there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to Alex Santos, the 20 year old right hander out of New York. He uh, in 2020 he was the 72nd overall pick and signed a 1.25 million dollar signing bonus. Over the 2021 season, over the 41.2 innings, he had a 3.46 ERA, a 1.46 WHIP. 48 Ks and 30 walks. Pretty high there. Christian, I'm going to start here with you. He's your number two um, pitcher in the uh, in the organization. How do you see Santos rounding out here? So he's pretty raw. Um, still hasn't filled out to his body quite yet, but that's because he's young. You know, he's 19 years old. Um, but there's still a lot of really good projection in him. He has a really good fastball curveball combination with plus command. Uh, so it's something that um it kind of gives hope you know for right now he's kind of got an average feel for the rest of his pitches you know average change up slider but he he his command and controls was going to help him really develop into the next level uh like i said still young um but with his intangibles it just seems really projectable and he has high spin on his fastball as well which is also going to create more deception as he continues to grow. He hides the ball really well. Um, his mechanics are fluid, really sound. Uh, so, I mean, for somebody his age, he's pretty, like, I mean, he just looks good. He just looks sound. He looks like a pitcher on the mound. Um, how it projects over the next couple of years, um, we'll have to see. Uh, but for now, he looks promising. And how about you, Phil? How do you feel about him? I was taking notes on him. I don't actually don't know much about him at all. I was just looking though, you know, when a, a teenage pitching prospect is making starts in full season ball, it's definitely somebody you want to watch. So yeah. uh, based on Christian notes, Christian's notes, I'm, I'm definitely going to check him out. Um, his barrel, his barrel rate against last year his estimated barrel rate against was good. 7.7%. I've got that. So he wasn't getting hit real hard, mm -hmm. um, which is impressive for a kid as, as young as he is. Like Christian said, it's, it must be that command. Um, this pitchability that he's got this early on. So, yeah, and that's something exciting. that definitely, yeah, it's something that definitely plays, you know, at the major league level, being able to command your, um, your pitches. And then from there, they can kind of work on him with his velocity and get him up to that. Uh, do you happen to know what, what he's usually throwing, Christian? Like, kind of where he tops out at? Uh, give me one second. Cause I know that's something that, um, you know, I, I mean, he, I, Around the draft, he was sitting around 94, and he touched 97. Okay. Hey, so, you do that with command. Yeah. I, I mean, his curveball sits in the high, eight, uh, low 80s as well. Yeah. So Good differential. Sweep. Yeah, it's more of a sweeping breaking ball. Yep. Um, And then the changeup is around – it's a hard changeup around 87, 88. So. Okay. All right, boy, let's go through uh, my favorite part of the show, which is the 6 through 10, starting with number 6, Shea Whitcomb, 7, Joe Perez, Eight, Sean Dubin, nine, Jordan Brewer, and ten, Forrest Whitley. I'm gonna start here with you, Christian. Talk about one or two of these guys that stands out. Oh, there's one really uh polarizing name on that list. Um, that a lot of people have basically everybody has just like kind of like prospect fatigue on him at this point. That's Forrest Whitley. Yep. <laughs> but um, I actually want to talk about Sean Dubin. And the reason why I want to talk about Sean Dubin is because he's another one of those older prospects. Um, he started a lot of games last year, but the Astros are in desperate need for a late inning reliever. And with his velocity, his two pitch combo between his fastball and his slider is absolutely relentless. And he's been able to dominate with just those two pitches throughout the minor leagues. So he is somebody that you know, the Astros, like I said, they do they are looking for more uh, for more back end of the bullpen help. You know, they traded for Kendall Graveman last year. Ryan Presley is their lockdown closer, but they don't really have anybody after that. And I think that he can step in and take that 
seventh inning high leverage role with the combination of those two pitches and really just run away with the job. Yep. And uh, I'm going to re- remind you here, Phil, of these guys, uh, which one do you want to talk about? Joe, you know, Joe Perez, I saw on, uh, let me pull my sheets up, but man, he was on like every sheet is one of the top um, hitters stats wise in the system last year. Um, so I think Perez is definitely got to watch. Uh, like I had his estimated ex woba at low A is 388, which is excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at high A, well, it's the Giants. I was talking Giants earlier. Uh, where is he at at high A here? Joe Perez, number two at high A, a three, 393 estimated ex woba, 14% estimated barrel rate. Um, so the dude can hit, I think. I, I would be. Following this year to see how he handles the high minors. And um, I wouldn't maybe anticipate him up this year, but next year it could be a guy that they're using big league level. You know, I'm sitting here where true. I was sitting here in 2020. He's locked up for a while. That's true. Yeah. Um, looking at his BAPIP in 2021, um, it was 357. And, you know, he's still bad at 291. So even with that, you know, so it's possible. Do you think, uh, He's a, could hit 300 in the uh, in the majors, Christian. What are you thinking? I mean, the hit tool is there. I mean, he showed it uh, throughout the entire minor leagues. So uh, if he's if he's able to cons- consistently make contact at that level, there's there's no reason why he can't. Now it's whether the power also develops with it. Um, I mean, he's he crushed the ball, but it's just the consistency. Where do you see as far as an ETA for him? I mean, he. Like I said, with Bregman, it makes it tough because Bregman is just starting that brand new contract that he got. Um, he can, he's not athletic enough to play shortstop. Um, Yuli Gurriel is 37, but he just won a batting title, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, he could probably be up next season. It's just uh, it's just about getting him the playing time that he needs because you don't want to stunt a prospect. Uh, you know a. a high profile prospect like that, you don't want to stun his growth by not letting him get the at bats to continue to develop. So he might just stay in the minor leagues just to continue to get the at bats. Yeah. And like we said earlier, with, with the team being so competitive in win now, right now mode, you know, that window is closing. Yeah. It's um, they kind of got a second guess who they're going to bring up, but um, Hey, and for as much as I know Christian didn't want, wasn't excited about this, uh, <laughs> this farm system. I'm actually, you know, there's a few guys out there that actually stand out to me. You know, I'm a little, I'm actually a lot more optimistic. Hey, that's uh, our after, job. There we go. There we go. We're here. <laughs> we're here to highlight these systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's amazing what these guys are doing. And because we're hearing things about how they're, they're making $11,000 a year you know, and they should be happy that they even have a chance and all this nonsense. And, but what we see from the Astros is that they continue to produce prospects, whether they're, you know, top end ones that are, you know, young guys, or like you guys said, the 24 year olds, the 25 year olds, the 26 year olds who are coming into their own and they're going to lay the foundation for this next wave of the Houston Astros. Um, because, you know, if the window, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, somebody has to. We don't know who. (laughs) Phil, um, thank you so much for being on the show. Before we let you go, please plug everything that you do. Yeah, well, um, if we want to do a quick one, one guy I like to highlight in the system, because I'm just interested by him, is Colin Barber. He got hurt Mm -hmm. last year, so he didn't play a lot. Um, But he kind of had a lot of good, a lot of bad, right? (laughs) So he struck out like 41% of the time at high A. Um, as a, he was 20 years old, um, but then he was walking 17% of the time and he hit for a lot of power. ISO was 238. Um, I had his estimated barrel rate at 18 and a half percent at high A last year. Um, so look, I think he's, he's kind of a, maybe a, a type of player that people aren't having on the radar just because he didn't play a lot last year and he struck out a lot, but I keep your eye on Barber this year to see how he bounces back from injury and whether that um, contact rate comes back down to earth a little bit, if it does, he's a there's a exciting player in there. So yeah, he's my dude in the system that likes to walking talk about. a lot and striking out a lot. It sounds like a Joey Gallo esque yeah, kind of profile reach. there. So modern baseball. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Now plug everything that you do. <laughs> yeah, look, the Palazzo podcast is every Tuesday, five o'clock Eastern. 
Um, hop on. It's live on YouTube. We like taking questions more than talking about stuff, to be honest <laughs> with you. So if people want to come on and, and ask us questions the whole show, that's what we're looking for. Um, so uh, that's 5 o'clock Eastern Tuesdays, or you can catch the podcast whenever. Um, I have my blog. I write kind of ad hoc there. Uh, I'm not doing anything regular. So just when something pops in my mind, I'll write it up. Or when I have the time to write it up, essentially. Um, so you can always check out my stuff there. And then if you follow me on Twitter at Phil of Sports, I try to share stuff as I'm working on it to get feedback on it to see what people think or get people's opinions. So um, follow me on there. Yeah, for all you prospect heads, get on his Google Sheet. It has everything yeah. that you didn't know you needed to know. It's all there and no one else is doing it, especially it's free. So thank you, Phil. It's a great resource for all of us. I know I was just Definitely. I was in it for like 30 minutes, once again, on the clock, and I shouldn't have been doing it. But it is what it is. So we'll just keep that here. Hopefully they're not watching this. But uh, as always, Hopefully they um, are. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, Christian, uh, you know, tell the listeners where to find you or anything that you're working on. And we'll, we'll get out of here. Uh, they know where to find me at Seacrest underscore 26. I'm here for the people. But bam, bam. And uh, you can always find me, Marty underscore Tallman, here at Triple Play Fantasy. Uh, we'll be tackling the – who's the next team? Angels. 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 All right. Yeah, finish. We got two more teams in the West. Yep, the uh, Angels, and then we'll finish up with the uh, with the Mariners, which are very, with a very special yeah, guest, so a little bit of a tease there. But um, all right, guys, we're going to get going. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.